And more circuit fun today. Uh, today's circuit is a flexible ramp generator circuit. Uh, basically a circuit that generates a ramp voltage where we can adjust the speed of that ramp, the gain or should say uh, size or magnitude of that ramp, and the DC offset of that ramp voltage. And the reason for this was really a request that came from one of my subscribers who's also a ham radio operator and wanted a voltage that would ramp like this and we can adjust it uh, the way I've shown to drive the voltage controlled frequency input of his signal generator. Therefore that would give him the ability to adjust the signal generator to give a sweeping frequency output. And that's a very useful thing when testing things like receiver IF stages and filters and things like that to generate a frequency sweep. And by being able to adjust, you know, the DC offset and the gain, etc., of that ramp, you could really tailor the frequency range that you're going to cover when you're sweeping it with this ramp circuit. So let's go take a look at the schematic of this circuit, how I built it and then we'll go make some measurements and hook it up to a function generator. So uh, here's the overall schematic here. And uh, let's see, it looks like that would focus in okay. The power for this circuit is essentially a two, two 9 volt batteries. I, I've got it on power supplies, but uh, the two 9 volt batteries is really the way you would use this if you were just going to build this thing as a standalone uh, instrument, if you will. Okay. And uh, the rest of the circuit is actually pretty straightforward. It's a, a 555 timer circuit, um, and uh, you know, that kind of generates our basic sawtooth waveform. And the way we do that is we use a current source, and that's these components right in here. These two resistors uh, set up a, a bias voltage here, you know, from the 9 volt supply of about 6 volts, uh, you know, biasing the base of this PNP transistor, and that's since that's a fixed voltage. We're essentially putting a fixed voltage across these resistors here, and by adjusting this pot, we can adjust the emitter current, which effectively adjusts the collector current. That constant current will essentially charge this capacitor in a linear fashion. That's how we get the ramp. So by changing the value of that capacitor, you can do that with a range switch, and by adjusting this pot, you can adjust how quickly or how slowly that voltage ramps up. The 555 timer circuit takes care of you know, allowing that charge to happen and then discharging the capacitor uh, just by connecting the trigger and the threshold together and the discharge together right to that cap. So this will allow the capacitor to charge up and drop down. Now in doing that, uh, the 555 timer circuit is going to basically make that ramp vary between about plus 3 volts and plus 6 volts. So uh, I, I really didn't want to kind of start from that. So the first stage that we go into after that is just an inverting buffer that has a DC offset of, on it. And uh, this resistor you might want to select when you go play with it. I used a 4.7K, which worked out pretty well. And the idea with this is that I wanted, you know, since it's inverting, I want to take that ramp, and that lower portion of the ramp is going to become you know, the upper portion of the inverted ramp. And I wanted that point to be at ground. So therefore, when, later on when I go and change the gain, I'm adjusting the magnitude of that signal with respect to one point, and the signal grows in one direction. Okay, So this is just a level shifting inverting buffer right here. The output of that buffer then goes into this pot, which allows me to adjust how big of a signal I'm going to pick off into this guy, which is an inverting gain stage with a maximum gain of 5. Or actually, it has a fixed gain of 5, and we're just adjusting the size of the signal going into it. So this is how I can adjust the magnitude uh, of the ramp. And then I also have a, this just bias string here between plus and minus 9 volts. And I can adjust this pot up or down to adjust the DC offset. So there's the DC offset adjustment, the gain adjustment, and the sweep speed adjustment right there. Now if you wanted to uh, have a much wider range than in terms of sweep speed, then you can get with just this arrangement, you could you know, switch in various size capacitors. So this will give you more than a decade of adjustment range, the way I have it arranged, but you can put in, you know, you know, say a 22 microfarad cap, a 2.2 microfarad cap, or just go up or down to make it faster or slower. So, uh, so that's the whole circuit. It's actually pretty simple. You get the adjustable ramp out of here, but then the output of the 555 timer can also be used as a trigger pulse for the scope. 
and that's what I've got shown on the scope over here as well. That's the green trace down at the bottom. That's the uh, the trigger output. So if we trigger on that, it makes it really easy to kind of synchronize our sweep on the screen. So um, you can always kind of get a nice stable uh, you know uh, waveform here, regardless of what you're doing, you know, with the ramp and offsets and everything else. So. The blue trace right now is just showing about where ground is. And you can kind of see how if I adjust the gain pot, the you know, we're adjusting gain with respect to the bottom of that signal. It's not really moving. And even if I adjust it down, the bottom of that signal still stays about still when I adjust the gain. And that was the whole idea of that intermediate stage to uh, add a, an offset. But that was just my personal preference. So that's how that circuit works. And uh, you know, the construction of it, I just put it up on a breadboard here. There's the 555 timer. Um, the, this is the cap capacitor that we're charging with the current source transistor, which is that guy right there. That's the adjustment uh, for the sweep speed, adjustment for gain, and adjustment for offset. The op amp, really not that critical. I used a, an NE4558 since I've got a bucket load of them here. You could also use an LM358. You could use a pair of 741s, just about any general purpose op amp that can uh, withstand a plus or minus nine volt power supply uh, should work just fine. So the way we'd use this to you know, maybe create a sweeping signal out of a function generator is actually pretty interesting. So we'll uh, take a look at that hookup. So I've got this old function generator here. You've seen me do a video on this one in the past. This one happens to have this uh, voltage controlled frequency input and the voltage that's applied to there will determine the frequency of the output. So I've got that hooked into a power supply here right now. And uh, let me get my meter turned on here again. So, uh, and by adjusting this power supply, okay, we can also adjust the frequency that's coming out. So right now, this power supply is sitting at about 60 millivolts, 58 millivolts, and the frequency is about 300 kilohertz and we can see it here on the screen. And then if I take and adjust this power supply voltage, and you can let's see if I can pan back here enough, adjust the power supply voltage, I can actually see the frequency varying on the frequency counter up there. Okay, so if I adjust it up to about 700 kilohertz, you can see that on the screen here. If I adjust it back and forth, you can kind of see the frequency moving back and forth. You can see it moving on the counter. I'm just adjusting the knob on the power supply and you can see the voltage varying here. So what you might do is say, well, I know I've got two voltages or two frequencies that I want to sweep between. Maybe I want to sweep between about 300 you know, kilohertz and maybe you know, 800 kilohertz or something like that. Okay, so, so let's say I want to go between, you know, say, 700 kilohertz or so and, uh, and 300 kilohertz. So I can see that at 700 kilohertz, the voltage on that input needs to be 2.175 volts or so. And then we also know if I down around 60 millivolts or so, I get to 300 hertz. So I know those two freq uh, voltages that I want the ramp to go through. So 60 millivolts, that's bit pretty close to ground. I'll kind of leave that where it is. I can adjust uh, that offset up and down a little bit here. And I'm just going to do this kind of roughly to kind of show what's going on. And uh, we know we want about 2 volts or so of swing. Channel 1 has got a 2 volt scale. So let me adjust for about a 2 volts, just over 2 volts. So this should give me a ramp voltage that will ramp me from about 300 hertz to about or 300 kilohertz to 700 kilohertz. So all I need to do then is take the voltage that or the voltage controlled frequency input. This is the coax that's going to that. I'm going to connect it up to a, an adapter here and connect this now to the ramp output from my circuit. All right. So now if I take a look at the counter, it's jumping around a whole lot and uh, the frequency is jumping around here. So what I'm going to do uh, just to kind of slow things down quite a bit, I'm going to take a much larger capacitor. I've got a 22 microfarad cap in there now. I'm going to increase it by about a factor of 10 uh, just to slow this th ramp way down. Kind of jump that into the breadboard here. So now, if we take a look at the frequency, we can see it ramping a whole lot slower. In fact, I'm going to slow this down even more. 
Okay, I've got that slowed down quite a bit now. So we can actually see this thing very quickly jump to a slow frequency and then ramp that frequency up slowly and then jump back and ramp it up again. We watch it on the counter, we can kind of see it ramp up to about 700k and then jump very quickly back down to 300 again. So, uh, so now we've got this uh, signal coming out of the function generator that's sweeping in frequency and we can use that as an input to a circuit that we might be testing to you know, understand its frequency response and by putting that say on the scope screen here okay you'd be able to kind of see the the signal grow or shrink depending on how that circuit is responding to that sweeping frequency and that's typically how uh, you know how you'd use you know a sweep oscillator for doing things like receiver alignment or testing a filter or something like that so yeah, I hope you found this uh, video useful it's a kind of a fun little circuit it was uh, you know could be improved a lot with you know different types of devices but I wanted to build this with very common easily found components like an LM555 any kind of almost general purpose uh, either dual or a pair of single uh, op amps and uh, some very common parts so anyway uh, thanks again for watching uh, you know, please uh, leave me comments let me know what you think and uh, we'll see you next time thank you